Okay, so after watching Richard Valor's uh, last video, um, I, I remembered a trick that I used to do back in the day using a very, very fundamental method, and I stopped doing it because it was like too easy. Um, and I just didn't really have another method to do the trick that was satisfying to me. Um, and then I realized this method I learned, you know, like months ago, uh, but I just never connected the dots. So now I can start performing this trick again uh, with a more kind of advanced method, I guess. So there's a lot of ways to present this, but I'm just going to go with uh, kind of a, a way I'm going to do it for now. So the card is uh, selected. Let's say I don't know what it is. That one there. It gets lost in the pack, whatever the case. Uh, can give it a shuffle. Can give it some cuts. Um, it doesn't really matter. Now, the idea is they, the spectator can essentially say uh, what to remove. So, um, let's go for, what about, um, I don't know. Uh, this is the first spectator, let's say, uh, what, which half do you want to remove? Um, they say, okay, bottom half. I don't know, so what do you, do you say that's... Is that, is that about... Is that about... I don't know, is that about halfway? I think that's about halfway, so we'll get rid of the bottom half. Left with... Uh, Roughly 20, uh, how many is it, 40? 52 cards, 26, is that what it is? I think it's 26, right? Uh, roughly 26 cards. Let's go again, uh, top or bottom? Maybe they say uh, top half this time. So let's get for, try to get a kind of a, a close to, uh, what's that, is that about halfway? Remove the top half. And we're left with more or less, uh, what's that, like 10 cards or something like that. So let's go again, maybe they say top half again, uh, remove that half, and we're left with, that's five cards, we actually kind of want four, five's a bit too much, so maybe they take one out uh, to remove, and maybe that one, they would get rid of that. So now, we're left with uh, essentially four cards, um, and I want, you know, I want you to tell me if any of these four cards is your card. No? Not your card? Okay, uh, I get them to hold their hand like this, so I, they do this part, and they pinch hard on the corner like this, and I say, what was your card? And as, as they name it, I hit everything out of their hand, and the only card that's left is the Ten of Clubs, their card. What's good, peeps? It's your boy, Eduard Toda. Uh, <laughs> a lot of you guys, commented on the uh, drama alert video with pig, uh, pig cake uh, you know <laughs> a lot of you guys went hard on him man you guys like were savages it was just just going in on his ass but um I don't know if you guys read some of the comments but I took it as a comedic thing like I didn't I didn't take him very seriously I realized what he was doing you know I, I've been following him for a while he's pretty like, I actually really enjoy his content he's, he's got some funny humor and I, I know it's not for everyone but um, <laughs> So I didn't take it too seriously. I mean, if you realize, like, you know, you know, with the intro shots and with all the stuff, it was kind of a joke. But, you know, I still wanted to get my message out there. Uh, but I actually ended up talking to him on Discord. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? I told him some shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I went it. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was, you know, he's a cool dude, man. He was a cool dude. And he's like, bro, I didn't, you know, you realize, like, that was com comedy. I was like, yeah, man, like, for real, like, it, you know, didn't. Um, yeah, so we had we had some good banter back and forth, and he's a good, he's a good dude. He actually he actually said like uh, you know like keep it up and, and keep doing what you do and you know like um, kind of encouraged me. So you know he's a good dude. So there's a couple things I'm I'm pretty excited about. One of them is happening for sure, and the other one is kind of a potential thing. Uh, and I can't comment on any, anything about these things uh, for a while. So I'm gonna keep you guys in the dark. Um, but just know there's some cool shit gonna be happening if you follow my Instagram You'll know from uh, a couple of my stories uh, You know there's some stuff going down so uh, keep an eye out. All right, so today I'm gonna be reacting to Schiff and Ton um, I Someone a couple of people suggested it and uh, I checked out the intro part of the fool us thing and I thought it was I, I like the dude so I was like I, I'm kind of intrigued so I'm gonna react to it and uh, tell you guys what I think my name is Chef Anton, and I am a professional trick shot artist and magician. The first experience I had with the pool table, Please. I saw these colorful balls rolling around. They disappeared into a pocket. I went to the pocket to get it, and the ball was gone. It was complete magic to me. I was uh, highly influenced by my grandmother, I and mean, she was an amazing pool hustler. By the time I was nine, I was what? such an expert, I couldn't even get an honest game anymore. It was after that that I decided I wanted to blend. How do you hustle on pool, though? Pool ball wizardry. I want people to understand why I love hustling. If I can share that experience, my love with them, 
done. How can you hustle and pull? You can just be really good and be beat people, right? Like you don't really hustle. But ladies and gentlemen, tonight I am going to share with you some of the greatest pool hustles ever created. Once you learn the That's secret to it, you'll never again pay for a drink or a lunch or a really nice gold watch. Uh, first, I would like to make sure that the pool table is level. There's a one way as a professional that we would check that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. <laughs> I like this type of stuff, man. To uh, bet you that I could shoot an entire game of pool using nothing more than, let's say, a little piece of thread from my shirt, would you be willing to bet against me? <laughs> I mean, it seems like that'd be a good bet, wouldn't it? Yes. It's not a good bet. Oh. No, you should never bet against somebody like me, because while it'd be impossible to shoot using just a piece of thread, it's not if I change it into a $1,500 pool cue. <laughs> wow. Bro. That's the best use of that I've ever seen. I love hustling. I've been shooting pool since I was a little kid, and I started hustling when I was about nine years old. But the greatest hustle that I ever pulled off in my entire life was the day that I actually hustled Minnesota Fats. You guys have all heard of Minnesota Fats before, right? One of the greatest pool hustlers that ever lived. I met him at a pool hall. This dude is legit. Billiard playing cards. You ever seen billiard playing cards? No. No, they're really cool. They look like this. Well, that's half of them. The other half looks like that. See, it screws together kind of like a pool cue, which is, a, it's actually really cool. The only downfall, <laughs> oops, the only uh, downfall to them is the, um, <laughs> you gotta Dude. remember to tighten them. That's very important. But yeah, see, when they're, when they're tightened up, you don't even see the seams, which is kind of nice. You could even look for yourself. All right, now, uh, what I would like you to do, Allison, that is, is to good, simply man. push out any one of the cards in the deck. Just push one of those out. I like how he's linking everything together. Show your card to, uh, to everybody in the audience. I'll turn my back so I don't see it. Make sure everybody gets a good look at the card. Okay. Show it all around. That's good. <laughs> back over that way. That's fantastic. Believe it or not, Minnesota Fats actually thought that I might be cheating. <laughs> what are the chances? No, he thought that maybe the deck was marked. And you can see that there's no marks on this deck, okay. on the front or on the back, right? Including the card that you have. There's no marks on the front of the card. Right. There's no marks on the back of the card. There's no way that I could possibly know where that card is. That's an old gag, now, but it works. Like it My card filled up, so I had to cut and delete some shit. All right, we're back. What I would like you to do is to uh, sign your name for me on one of those dots. I'm sorry, let's get a pin. There you go. Uh, sign your name for me on one of the dots. That'd be fantastic. Okay. Just like you'd sign a card that's destined for eBay. Okay. Fantastic. Please let me get that for you. <laughs> you look like you're busy. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, sticker, place it onto the face side, the picture side of your card. It could be the only queen of diamonds in the world that is your name written on it, right? Yes. All right, now, oh, before I forget, we need a uh, couple of pool balls. Do you have a, a couple of pool balls down there? Interesting idea to use a sticker. I don't know why you would need that, but we'll see, I guess. One more great uh, billiard bar bet for you. Take two pool balls just like so. Learn how to do that, you'll never pay for a drink again for the rest of your life. Thank you. All right. Now, let's recap like what's happened guy, here. Man. Allison, you had a free choice of 52 cards in the deck, including three cards that were face up on the table that you could have selected, right? Yes. You wrote your name on one of these gigantic stickers in your handwriting, and we placed it onto the face side, the picture side of your card. I forgot what your card was now. Your card, that's right. Queen of Diamonds has your name written on it in your handwriting, going all the way into the deck. Yes? Yes. The proposition bet from Minnesota Fats was using nothing more than those two pool balls precariously balanced one on top of another and a little bit of magic that I would be able to find your card with your name written on it in your handwriting out of this deck of cards. Now that would actually be a good bet, right? Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> if you don't mind giving me like a little take one, this one doesn't always work. <laughs> Could be here for a while. There you go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you the same shot that fooled Minnesota Fats when I was just nine years old trying to find Allison's card in the most unusual manner possible. Watch. There you go, needs a little more speed, a little more speed, a little more speed. That's good, that's good. Hit the hat, that's good. Woo! Wait, we actually got one. <laughs> Would you take that off? Oh my goodness. Does that have your name written on it? In your that handwriting, is that the one? Is yes. Ladies and gentlemen. Such a good routine. Such a good routine. This is one of my favorite foolish acts of all time. I know I said that about uh, Joshua J. Tell me how 
you got your name. Oh, Chef Anton. Yes. Actually, Chef is an acronym. But this is really, really good, man. Forever. <laughs> kind of always reminds me what I do out here. I was, uh, good. Uh, yes. Okay, because I was expecting a meal. Oh, yeah. No, sorry. I don't cook. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, and you started playing pool when you were four years old? I started, yeah, when I was four years old. Uh, basically, I wasted the first three years of my life. <laughs> yes. Kind of drifting. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, by nine, you were like... A, a true hustler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my grandmother was like a, a pool hustler in her day, back around the days of the Depression. Right. And that's when it wasn't such a litigious society, so you could get away with this and, like, yeah. not get shot. <laughs> and, and, and you were making money at nine? Yeah, I was making money at, at nine years old. Wow. Yeah, it's what I've been doing. Do you right, so by, by hustler, he means, like, he'd make bits. National television. Yeah, no. Boys? <laughs> um, boys, hi. Okay. Now we're, we're um, if you don't talk to us, we're gonna play pool. And I'm gonna lose some money, so. <laughs> that was a good joke, yeah, It's a good juggling, you know? I mean, there's a lot of juggling in there that I really like. There's a great thing here, the appearing Q yes. was, a, was an appearing cane, yes. and you did a lot of the putting it, but you actually uh, confused us. We had to argue about it a little bit because okay. of a thing called a card sword. And the card sword is an elaborate gimmick Yes. that makes a card pop out onto a sword. You're trying to figure out how you built a card sword into a card cue, and you didn't. You <laughs> I, didn't, I, I you didn't. rat bastard. That's true. You <laughs> just did it with sleight of hand. You brute forced it on there. And as far as the card trick is concerned, uh, I want to change a little bit to stealing. Now, you do bar best. You ever do... Ever do you ever just steal something like in a store? Because sometimes that's called lifting something in a store, you know? And sometimes you can go in and steal with one hand. Sometimes you can steal with the other hand. Sometimes you can steal with both hands and have right. a, a double lift at the same time. Have you ever done that kind of stealing? I, I've, I've probably done that kind of uh, pickpocketing at yeah, one time or another. Yeah, that's the real hardcore criminal yeah. stuff, isn't it? Okay, yeah. So are you convinced they know everything that you did i i think so that i think they're uh, they're definitely on to something you're, here yeah. you're convinced <laughs> but so we will you... still never ever take a bet with you <laughs> that's a very wise decision well so you didn't fool them but you certainly entertained us all thank you so much yes yeah. yeah. i mean on the real though that routine was mad bro i mean okay remember how i always talk about motivating props and how i t always talk about Oh, like, you know, the, the theme, you know, the, it fit the, uh, the persona, it fit, you, I always talk about this stuff. This guy executed that perfectly. I mean, if you want to talk about, uh, a good performance and a good, like, remember how I was talking about in the Will Sai video about how the, the individual tricks were good, but there was no cohesion between the tricks. This was the complete opposite. Well, the tricks were good too, but this worked so well, I mean, you know, the fact, I don't, I don't know if this guy performs anywhere else apart from like pool holes, but um, the fact that he, he can do all that pool stuff and then he, he makes a, a pairing, as they said, a pairing cane, it's an a pairing, uh, a pairing pool, pool cue. I mean, that's just brilliant, right? I mean, that's the, like, the only real use of that that I've ever seen that's motivated and it's real, <laughs> you know? Like, who the hell wants to make a cane appear? Oh, yeah, and then he pulls out the deck and he screws it on like a pool cue, which, again, it was a funny thing and it was a magical moment because when he pulls the cards out, they're like this, but then he, you know, he writes them back together. But it wasn't, like, a main moment, but it was a magical moment that was in within the theme of, of the pool playing and the pool hustling, and that's amazing. I love that, you know? And then the whole you know, uh, the whole thing with the, with the balancing and then they, the, the balls go around and hit the hat, all the cards shoot up and he gets it on there. Uh, you know, that, that's, that whole, the whole thing was just amazing. You know, it was just amazing. Uh, probably one of my favorite acts on Fool Us, for real, for real. Um, it didn't fool me. It fooled me in the sense that I'd have to rewatch it to really see exactly when when this the thing happened when the move happened but i think i know exactly what he did uh and i'm pretty sure i could replicate it given some practice but uh you know this whole thing was next level i mean li literally like if you want to see a performer that is good at, at putting together a show this dude right here man well that's about it for this video if you enjoyed it leave a like subscribe i do daily videos uh Follow me on social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. All the links are down below. If you want to support me on Patreon, the link is also down below. And as always, mad respect, much love, stay lit, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!